Hey guys, welcome back. This is Mr. Corb, and in this hashtag Corb Stat Chat, we're going to be talking about the graphing calculator. So right now I have the uh, TI-84+, Plus, and uh, what we're going to do now is talk about random numbers. So I'm going to be able to generate a list of random numbers on this thing, and that's going to help us in determining a sample space. So again, hopefully this is going to be helpful for you. This is just a quick tutorial, um, and instead of me doing this, or trying to show you buttons by holding it here, which is really hard to see sometimes. I'm going to switch to a screencast where I have the GI-84 graphing calculator um, program on the computer so you can see it step by step, see what buttons I'm pushing, and I'll have a tutorial listed beside it. So I'm going to switch over, and hopefully you enjoy. All right, so let's put this into action. We're going to be walking through a TI-84 tutorial for generating random numbers here. Uh, so on the right-hand side of your screen, you're going to see the TI-84 Plus Silver Edition version of the calculator. As long as you have a TI-84, depending on what edition it is, no matter what, uh, the operations and functions are still going to work the same. So on the left-hand side, you will see a step-by-step -step instructional guide, which I will post in the description of this video, uh, where you can download and check it out on your own if you want some extra practice or if you just want a record of your own. Um, we are going to be walking through step by step and then go through an example. So to start off, we need to know some functions of the calculator and where the buttons are. So to, to kick things off, underneath alpha, we're going to have math. So this is the third button down on the left hand side. We're going to click on math and that's going to be primarily where we get uh, a lot of our information from. As you can see across the top, we have a bunch of different uh, categories and then sub things that we can do. But what we want to do next is click on the left arrow is going to get us over here to probability where we're going to be operating most of the time in this class. Once you click on PRB, we're going to click the number five. It's a quick way to uh, pick a number on the list, especially so you don't have to keep arrowing down. You can just click five. That'll give us our RAND int operation. So we have RAND int, which will give us random integers between a certain set of numbers. Um, and the reason we do this is say that you have a set of uh, 20 individuals, right? We, we label uh, everybody with a number, so 1 through 20, and then you want to pick a random set of 10 people from that set. So that's what the random integers is going to do. We are going to pick the smallest number, the largest number within a set, and then we're going to select the number of numbers that we need, and that's going to be the order in which these numbers follow. So between each number, we put a comma, which can be located right beside the parentheses here. Our next part that we do is we're going to enter in the smallest number. So obviously if we're counting off, our first number is going to be 1. <clears throat> so we enter in 1, comma, then we enter in the largest number in our space that we're talking about. And that in this case would be 20. Okay, so we have 20 individuals within our study, so we label them 1 to 20. So we have smallest number is 1, the largest number is 20, comma, and then we want 10 random numbers from that set. So I'm going to enter in 10, End the parenthesis, and before you press enter, if you press enter, it'll just give you the set on the screen. But then once that set's on the screen, you can't really do anything with it. Um, it you can't use it for to find anything else. It's just generating the random numbers, which is fine if that's all you need. But if you want to actually do stuff with it, you want to put it into a list. And those list operations, we're going to be doing in a, in a different video where we talk about uh, storing lists. We're going to talk about clearing lists, deleting lists, which is difference, and uh, Again, that's going to be in another video, but one thing I do want to show you here is how to store it so you can retrieve it from a table later on. So we are going to press, before we press enter, this STO with an arrow, that's store, and that will give you a little arrow on the screen. And then we're going to press second, and as you can see down here in these blue letterings, you have L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, L6. Those are our list operations, or our, I'm sorry, those are our lists that we can store to. I'm going to store it just for now into list one, but you can really enter in any list out of these six. So we store it in list one. So on the screen, you should see ran int 1, 20, 10, arrow L1. And that's what we have here. I'm going to go ahead and press enter. And here is our random numbers that have been selected. So 20, 6, 6, 3, 2, 15, and so on. And we can see all these numbers if I press the right hand arrow. But an easier way to see this is to actually retrieve it from the list that we stored. So to find that, we click on uh, stat. We're going to click on edit. 
And that's going to take us to a table which has all of our numbers in. So as you can see, 20, 6, 6, 3, 2, 15, 1, and so on. So it's really nice. It organized the data very nicely. Um, and uh, we can do stuff with this data later on when we start talking about what we can do with lists. We can sort them and so many other things. Uh, so hopefully this has been helpful. Um, again, I'm going to post this document in the description. And uh, feel free to watch the video as many times as you want. And if you have any questions, let me know. Just remember when you enter in the ran int, it is the smallest number, the largest number, and then the number of numbers that you want. All right, thanks guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.